The main window of the scene builder is composed of six panels. The first panel is what they refer to as the content panel. And the content panel is just a scene container for graphical user interface elements that make up the FXML layout. The second panel we'll look at is what they refer to as the library panel. And the library panel is located as indicated. The library panel basically provides for us the elements or controls that we we'll need in designing our FXML layout. So we can take elements from the library panel and put them on the content panel to design our FXML layout. The third panel we'll look at is what they refer to as the document panel, which is indicated as shown. And the document panel contains two sections, that is the hierarchy and the controller section. The hierarchy section simply displays a tree view representation of the FXML layout, while the controller section enables you to manage the controller source. The fourth panel we'll look at is what they refer to as the inspector panel, which is located as indicated. So the inspector panel contains three sections. That is the properties, layout, and the code sections. The property and layout section enable you to manage the properties of any control or element that you select on your FXML layout. The code section, however, enables you to manage your event handling activities on a selected element or component on the FXML layout. The fifth panel we'll look at is what they refer to as the path message and selection bar as indicated on the screen. So this will simply display the path to a selected element, though it can also display errors or status messages whilst we are designing our FXML layout. The safe and last panel we'll look at is what they refer to as the menu bar. And the menu bar basically provides access of menu commands that are available in the scene builder. Let's familiarize ourselves with a scene builder by designing a layout for text editing, similar to the layout we are seeing on the scene builder. So for us to do that, we first of all need to place some items in the content panel. So the first element we need on the content panel is a container, which will house all the elements we would add. So we go to the library and look for a container of our choice. We can either click on containers and scroll through to pick the container we want, or we can search for it if we know the name. So in this case, we are picking the border pane. We drag it and drop in the content panel. So we can preview it to see how our application would look like. We go to preview and show preview and this is how our application will look like. So we need to play some elements to make it have the same look as our scene builder interface. So when we go to the document panel, you can see the border pane will allow us to place elements at the top, the left, center, right, and bottom. Aside these positions, we cannot place elements wherever we want them to be placed. So the first item or element we'll insert is what they refer to as the ethical box or V box. So we need to go to the containers. It is a container. So we look for V box or we can type it, search for it, V box. And we drag the V box and drop it in the top part of the border pane. So we can drag it and drop it here and it will be perfect, or we can drag it and drop it on the content pane. So after dropping the V-box, we need to insert what is referred to as the menu. We can see on our scene builder we have menu. The V-box will enable us to put elements one on top of the other. To insert the menu, we need to go to the library and search for menu bar. So we search for menu, we pick the menu bar and we put it 
in the V-Box. So any other item we'll be inserting in the pairs V-Box will be right below the menu. For example, assuming we want to insert a button, we search for button, we drag it and we drop it on the V-Box. So we can see the button is right below the menu. But in our case, we are not looking for a button. We can select it and we delete. So when we preview it, we will see this is how it will look like. Our menu bar has been inserted and our menu items have also been inserted, but there are no event handlers, so nothing would happen. We can maximize, restore, and close. So the next thing we need to do is to add the preview display for the library panel and the document panel on the left side of our layout. Again, for us to do that, we can see the library panel is on top of the document panel, one on top of the other. So we would need another vertical box. The first part will contain the library panel and the next part will contain the document panel. So we go to the library and we search for VBOX. And in the VBOX, we are dropping it in the left part of the border pane. So we select it and we drag it and drop it. So instead of dropping it here, I'll drop it on the content pane for us to see. So our V-Box has been inserted. We can now insert two previews to display the document panel and the library panel. Again, we look in the library and we are looking for three. We pick the tree view and we put it in the vertical box. So there is one tree view for the library panel. We pick another tree view for the document panel and we put it in the vertical box. So we have two tree views, one for the library and one for the document panel. The next thing we need to do is to insert a text area in the center of our application. So we simply go to the library and search for text, find our text area and we drag it and drop in the center. So this is the center. We drop it and our text area will be inserted. Now we need to insert another tree view which will take care of the inspector panel. So what we need again is to simply drag and drop the tree view at the right part of it. So we just look in the library tree and drag it into the right of the border pane and that will take care of our inspector panel. So the next thing we would do is to insert a horizontal box at the bottom which will contain a label probably just to count the text that we are typing in our text area. So we pick a horizontal box, each box, and we drag it to the bottom. So inside the horizontal box we can add elements one after the other from left to right. So assuming we want a button which we'll use to save our text, we we'll simply pick the button and drop it in the horizontal box. Assuming we want a label which will be counting the characters that are typed in our text area, we simply look for label, we drag it and add it to the horizontal box. So the label will come right after the button because they are added one after the other from left to right. So when we preview it, we go to preview, show preview. This is what we would get. Now when we expand, this is what we get. We can expand and we can restore. However, the appearance is not as we expect. The space on top is too much. The space below is also too much. So we can modify that. So we simply select the first V box we added. That is the one occupying the space at the top. So after selecting it, we simply go to modify and we select use computed sizes to resize it. So it will resize it based on the elements that were added, their sizes. So it has resized it. Now when we preview, we can see the space on top has reduced but we still have a lot of space at the bottom. So we close it again, and we go to the last page box we added. We select it, 
you go to modify use computer sizes and based on the height of the button and the label we do resize it now when we preview it you can see the button and the label are at the bottom but we now have a wider text area however we can observe that the previews on the left are not the same sizes as the previews on the right so we can do the same so we go to the two previews we added take the first preview modify use computer sizes take the second preview modify use computer sizes you can pick the v box modify use computer sizes and we can pick the last preview modify use computer sizes so if we want to see visually how the previews will look like when we put content there we can just use sample data to show that so we can go to view and we select show sample data and this is how content will look like in our preview if we add content later so let's preview it to see how it will look like we select the show preview and when we collapse this this serves as our library panel and this serves as our document panel whilst we have our inspector panel on that side so inside we cannot type whatever we want to type so we can hide the sample data or remove it by simply going to view hide sample data so we can see that for any item that we pick and we go to the inspector panel we would be given the option to modify some properties, the layout, as well as the code that will handle the events behind that element or item. We would come later to play with these and we see what we can do. And we also have the controller section where we would decide which class will handle the events on our user interface we have designed. So we can see the button and the label there isn't space between them so we can select the two of them and we go to the layout section and under layout we have what they refer to as the margin and the padding so we can use the padding and margin to modify the distance between them as well as the space between them and the top bottom right or left of the container they are in so assuming we put height for the top, we put five again, and we put five for all of them. Now we can see the sizes have changed, but the space in between them is still the same. We go to the margin and we put ten. We put ten and ten. Now we can see the button and the label. There's now space in between them. And there's also a wider space between the two and as well as the left right bottom and top of the container housing them so we can change the content on the button by simply selecting it and going to the properties and we'll see the text so at the text we type what we want to be on the button so we want it to be safe so we can observe that there are some messages on the Path selection and message bar. So if you click on it, you can see the messages or warnings that are shown there. So that is what we should know. Whilst we are working, it is showing us some information or messages. So the label as well, we can change the text on it by simply selecting the label under properties and we type what we want. Count is and we save it. Now we can give them unique names which we will be referencing inside our controller or the class file that will be handling the events. So we select the button and we go to the code. Under code we have what is referred to as the FX ID. So what name do we want to give to our button? So we call it BTN save. And what name do we want to give to our label? So we call it LBL display. 
So we can as well give our three views, our text area, as well labels. So we go to the text area and under the text ID, we call it txt text. And the three view for the inspector panel, let's call it three view. And the tree view for the library panel, let's call it tree view one. And the tree view for the document panel, let's call it tree view two. So we are done with the naming. We can now preview it. And this is what we will get. So assuming we want to go to our controller and work on some event handlers, we don't necessarily have to go and rewrite the codes or declare the variables in the controller. We can simply go to the view and we go to show sample controller skeleton and we can now copy this code into our controller class and we don't need to declare. So once we copy this into the controller class, we only need to import the following and our controller will be able to communicate with the FX layout. Now we are done with the familiarization of the scene builder. We would look at how we can develop simple applications using the Java FX scene builder.